Okay, for the video today, I'm going to show you how to repair damaged threads in something. Specifically, this Edelbrock Torker intake that I bought for the turbo truck. So, of course, just being who I am, I wouldn't buy a new one. I bought this one off eBay for like 40 bucks. And I'm not sure the exact vintage of the Torker. I would assume it's 70s but I just have to repair the threads that are damaged in the thermostat housing and the carburetor flange, which is common for these older aluminum intakes. There's normally over the years, the threads just get galled or ruined. So I'm gonna show you how to repair that today using some helic oil kits. To show you a better idea what I'm talking about, uh, here are the threads I'm talking about here. These are where the carburetor studs or bolts go into. And you can see those look okay. Some of them are better than others, but these thermostat bolts are pretty ruined. Like it looks like this one was most recently sealed with just like cramming RTV in it or possibly epoxy to get the seal. But there's different threads in these intakes. Uh, these are actually a 5 16 thread. These are a quarter inch thread. Uh, this one back here is quarter inch. That one's 5 16th. Sometimes they have 3 8 threads in them some places like for alternator mounting and stuff like that. It really depends on the intake. But this is this intakes for a like 1955 through 1986 small block Chevy. So, but this will apply to any aluminum intake or anything else that you're gonna have damaged threads in. Okay, what I've done is I've bought a few different of these thread repair kits or helicoils, coils depending, or heli coils depending who wants to call it what. And there's one for each particular thread size and thread pitch. So even though these are quarter inch diameter bolt holes, there's also a different thread pitch. This is a quarter 20. These are 5 16 that's 16. And when you get one of these kits, it's maybe hard to see because it how the package is, but it will tell you the size bolt that it fixes and it will tell you the drill bit diameter that you need. And these are normally kind of a crazy drill bit diameter. It's not gonna be like a 3 8 or 5 16 because what you're actually gonna have to do is here, you're gonna have to drill this hole bigger and then the helicoil insert will go in there and restore it to the original thread size. So in this case, the quarter 20 uh, repair kit uses a 17 64 size drill bit and the 5 16 uses a 21 64 drill bit. And I just happen to have these drill bits in my stash, but you may need to go to a hardware store and buy these particular size because they might not come like a regular drill bit kit. Okay, so here's the basics of what we're doing. I have my drill loaded with my 25 64 drill bit, which is what the 3 8 16 thread repair kit requests. I have it taped off to a proper depth to mark for myself so I don't go too deep. The hole's only so deep, and some of these holes are blind, and they actually go into a water jacket like these thermostat ones here. I can feel the back of them. So you don't want to drill through them. If it's something deep like these carburetor studs up here, it doesn't matter because those go through like over an inch. You shouldn't drill through that, shouldn't. So what you wanna do is have your damaged hole here and you're actually gonna drill it out larger. This is larger than a 3 8 drill bit because the tap is actually going to tap it to a larger thread size. And then once you put the thread repair insert in, it will return to its original size. You can put a bolt properly in it. So I'm gonna attempt to drill it here is drilling in the soft aluminum, so I'm not going to uh, put oil on it. Some people may disagree with that, but trust me, it'll be okay. And just try and do your best to drill it as straight as possible. This drill bit is actually like surprisingly sharp. That normally isn't the case. So there, I've drilled into uh, a proper depth that I wanted. It's more enough for the bolt to engage. I'm just gonna blow it out with some air here. Okay, now you should be able to see that this hole is now smooth. No more threads in it. So now I've blown the chippings out. You have your tap here, which like I said is oversized, and it's actually marked on that accordingly. You won't be able to see it there, but it states it's an oversized tap. And along with the kit, at least in this kit, it included this little tool which both inserts the, uh, well the insert, 
And it also has a square drive here for your actual tap, which is kind of handy. Not all of them do that. You might need a tap wrench. So you just put your tap in there. Once again, I'm not using oil because it's going into aluminum. If it were going into steel or iron or something, I'd probably put oil on it. And you just slowly start tapping it. Now what you want to do is kind of feel for when it bottoms out if you're going into a blind hole like this one. Because if you keep cranking, once it reaches the bottom of the hole, you're just going to strip it out, especially in this soft aluminum. But what you want to do too is if it feels like it stops before it should, you know, like before it's all the way down to the hole, just back it out and make sure that a piece, like a metal shaving, didn't fall under it and somehow like wedge the thing or it's not going all the way down. Because you want to tap as much as you can into the hole. Because it's aluminum, it's pretty easy to do. Okay, right there at the bottom. Just gonna twist it out now. Once again, we're gonna blow it out. Don't necessarily need air, obviously. If you can just tilt it over and, you know, do it that way or just blow it out your mouth, whatever. And you'll now see that there's threads in there, but they're of a useless size. A bolt will not go into that. Like here's a 3 8 bolt. I can put it in and I can pull it right out. So that's of no help anymore. So now you're going to take your thread insert. This is the actual, what they refer to as the helicoil itself. Oops, there we go. And you'll see it has a little tang on the bottom. And it's actually like a little spring. You can kind of pull it apart. So you'll take the tool that came in the kit. And you'll put this on here. Like so. Whoop. There we go. Everything's backwards. It's kind of weird. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start threading it into those threads. Sometimes these are a little tricky to get started. But because they're a spring, they'll kind of like find their way. You just want to make sure you don't cross thread them or anything dumb. You can actually do it. And to start threading that in to the hole you just re-threaded. This is going to be the same thing as a tap. You don't want to force it down like once this thing hits the bottom and keep cranking on it because you're going to like either cross thread this thing or actually strip it or break it. But you want to make sure that you get it in far enough to where it's just under the surface. You don't want it sticking up over either. That's perfect right about there. Now, if this were going into an actual hole that was open, like bottomless, not a blind hole or something very deep, what you can do is you can actually, when this is in there, you can actually then tap on it and it'll break that tang off so you can thread a bolt, you know, like longer through it. But in this case, it's pretty much at the bottom of the hole and I won't be threading a bolt much longer than that in there anyway. So that's pretty good. In this case, it's actually the bracket for the alternator mount. As you see now, if I take my 3 8 bolt, which I threw in anger, it will now actually thread in there. And, oops, it's sturdy. Now I've done the rest of the holes here. Here's your thermostat holes. Now I just have to do the carburetor mounting holes and the plate up here, and this intake's good to go. And here's your finished result. You can see the thread inserts are in there. Nice new thread. Carburetor mounting flange, same thing. I just drilled the outer holes here because uh, the Holly carburetor I'm using only uses the outer holes. These inner holes are for like an older like Carter carburetors or something. But yeah, this will pertain to pretty much any metal thread repair using these helicoils. This is somewhat easier because it's in aluminum, but you can use these in steel or whatever. Hope it all helps some people out. I know it's kind of infuriating when you have a stripped hole or, you know, whatever. 
but that's how you fix it. Thanks for watching. You can click subscribe below. I know I don't ask for that a lot, but I guess I probably should be if you want to see more videos like this or the other uh, goofy stuff I film. Thanks for watching.